Okay, hi there guys and welcome to another Blowdown episode. So in our previous episode we were talking about different types of rods and reels and all the hooks um, and everything that you need for grunted fishing um, with, with bait, with prawns and blood worms and all different types of worms and your pulchards and everything. So today we're going to be talking about all your artificial lures. So we're going to run through everything again. Your rods, your reels and then different, different types um, of, of artificial lures. So firstly, I want to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed and everybody that has viewed our videos. Um, and please, please, please continue to like the videos. It really does help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Um, so yeah, if you can leave a, a comment and like the video, it really does help a lot. And then obviously subscribe to the channel. So we are here in extreme fishing again. Like I said last time, this is where I come to buy all my fishing tackle and bait. They've got fresh bait, always fresh bait. And um, yeah, they've always got, always got the best advice as well. So today joined by Yuan again. And mm -hmm. I am not an expert in artificial fishing. Um, if you've watched my channel for, for, for the previous videos, you know that I always use uh, bait that I get myself, live bait, or I go out and I get um, prawns or blood worms or sand worms. The only, when I go deep sea fishing, I do get choker and pulchet. Um, but other than that, I'm not a big um, expert. I don't know a lot about artificial lures. So then I, obviously I came to Johan. Um, being uh, owner of a tackle store, he knows his stuff very well. So he's going to explain exactly to us the, the line you have to use, the, I see he's got bait clips out here, the different colors for the different type of days, the different waters, um, all the different reels, the different rods, and everything that you need. So yeah, watch the whole episode. Um, there's going to be a lot of interesting facts and, and things that you're going to find out in this episode. Okay, so let's start off. Are we going to start again with the rods and the reels? I think the rods and the okay. reels. So you want to explain? Let's take the more affordable setup first. That yes. one is the more affordable setup first. Okay, so let's start with uh, wave power. As you know, this is an affordable rod going at 339. Um, the reason we choose this rod in particular is it's a very light rod, and especially when going for, for lures, you don't want something heavy. You want something where the tip can bend very easily when playing with that rule. Let's, let's show him the power of this. Okay, last time I wanted to do this, so you want to grab all the other end. Okay, that's what you're looking for. You want that little tip there, but you also need the backbone. So if you're talking about the backbone, we're talking about that part there, and then you want a nice flexible tip. Okay. Yes. So this is a nice entry level into starting your lure fishing. Nice and Cheap. And um, then, what length are you looking at when you we're talking about specifically artificial lures? We're not talk, not talking about um, boat fishing or estuary from the side fishing. We're talking about artificial lures. So what what length would you prefer or, or recommend to, to uh, somebody that's starting up? So you've got different lengths depending on what you want. Uh, this we have here is a six foot six, six. This is perfect for for the starting range. Then you can go up to a seven foot. 7 foot to 7 foot 7 till 8 foot. Longer than that, then it gets difficult to maneuver the lure like you want it to move. So we won't really go longer than 8. We will, we will stop it by 8. So then reel wise as well. Um, nice affordable reel going at 3.59. Is the Sasaki from Akuma 40. You can even go smaller to the 30s or you can go smaller if you want to but I think a 30 is more than enough for smaller size. Um, this, this is a very um, affordable reel and two ball bearing, nice and light and smooth as well. So when you go with these, we'll just jump to the braid, it's 15 pounds, we don't go you can go heavier, but we tend to try and go lighter than 15, 15, 12, 10 pounds. For spinning, the lighter you can go, the better it is to play with the lure in the water. 
So not not too heavy, not heavier than 20 pounds for when fishing with artificials. Okay, guys, obviously, like you said now, if you're going to fish artificial lures, you want to go with braid. Um, it's just the casting distance, the maneuverability, it's straight, there's no stretch, it's just straight on the lure, you can maneuver that every single twitch that you give the lure, you get the action that you want from it. Um, last time we were speaking about the difference between braid and, um, and monoline. And it comes down to the capacity of your reel as well. But um, when you're spinning, it, it's not as much the, the capacity on the reel as the, 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 the drag and the, how light the weight of the, the braid is very light. So you can actually cast a lot further with the braid uh, than you can with your nylon. I see you've got another reel there, you want? Yes, and I say this is one of my favorites. This is in between it for a beginner and a guy that's looking for something a bit better. This is the Kuma Jaw. This is the 30. This is just to show the size I would be looking at when buying a reel for, for, for spinning with lures. Um, the Zaki, we also sell these for guys going for tiger fishing. So this is just uh, to show you guys how strong this little reel is. And it goes for about 459 Rand 1. Okay. So they're not that expensive. Not that expensive. Not a big difference between the Azaki and, and that one. Yes. Okay. Um, so we're going to move over to a little bit, not a little bit, a lot more expensive setup. Um, this is for the guys that, that wants to specialize a little bit more in the fishing and not starting out. They know exactly what they want to do. Yes. So this is the Kuma Recon. Uh, this, as it says, is quite expensive. We're looking at a quarter to a three quarter ounce rod. Super flexible tip. I'm going to show you. Tip again. Let us show you this. Super flexible tip. Oy, okay, so yes, this thing is flexible. super flexible. You have look at this. This, this is, is what you're actually yeah. looking for. And this will give, with the braid, will give you nice action on any lure you use. So yeah, it all depends what you like. Like I said, I like the lighter stuff. You will get, you will get people going for more heavier and stiffer rods. That's what they prefer and what they're going for. And as we said, we're going for grunters. So with grunters, you want something light because they're very fussy fish. They, if they feel something on the other side of the, the line, they tend to, to leave it alone. Okay, and obviously then, uh, as well, in the previous video, we talked about the uh, Azori. And um, yeah, extremely good uh, reel. Uh, again, it's expensive, 1,550 Rand. Um, but it is definitely worth it if you if you this is your rod and your reel and you're gonna really make it your passion to target um, grunters or all cop uh, for that matter. But this is a good setup that will you can also use for cop. Yes. Uh, definitely use the same setup for cop. And if you pair that with nice braid, you'll have a rod and a reel for the rest of your life. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth the bucks. But if you are starting out, don't go for the expensive bucks as uh, things you're gonna bump it. You're gonna yeah, you do, when you start out, you don't look after your stuff as well. You can um, pay the school fees. And cost. as well, if you've got kids, make sure that you buy <laughs> buy the beginner stuff for them. Um, they're not going to appreciate an expensive rod and reel. They're going to break the eyes. They yeah, they get it stuck in the trees and get the get the cheaper stuff <laughs> for the kids. Okay, so let's talk about these ones first. Uh, so the lures. The lures. Oh, the let's rather go to what you need before. Okay, let's go to what before you need. Um, Johan, you're going to go, oh, is there a leader line involved? Do you tie it straight onto your braid? How does it work? So you've got your rod on, are you reel on your rod? You've got your braid on, what's the next step? Then we like to go for a nice thin leader. I like a 5.5 kilo Maxima or a Maxima Fluoro. Um, some guys say that, that the fluoro sinks, um, others say then they rather go with the normal Maxima Ultra Green we get. So anything from a 5.5 kilo to a 7 kilo, um, just depends what you're looking okay. what you want to pay for that as well. That's also beginner too. Okay, so, and then, then you tie that onto your, braid, uh, onto your braid. As a leader. Okay, as a leader. Nothing longer than a meter because you don't want this leader to go through your guards. Through your guards, okay. Yes. So you don't want that knot to go through. Yes. A specific knot that you would use? Uh, for easier knot for the beginners is the uni knot. Okay. It's a very easy and it looks like a stupid knot, but it's actually a very strong knot. Okay. And then we will move on if you know your knots and want to try something a bit more better. We go with the FG knot. FG knot, okay. Yes. So I will put two, uh, in the description, I'll put uh, videos to, to those links to those two specific knots. Um, and I'll also put an image in of, of every knot there. So 
um, yeah, that's a two knots. I know that a lot of people struggle to get your braid onto nylon. Um, yeah. So that's the two different type of knots you can use to, to get your um, to get your nylon and your braid connected. Okay, from there we go on to what he's talking about now. Okay, so we're going to quick clips. Uh, quick clips we use. So this isn't a Kuma product, but quick clips we use. This is much easier when fishing with lures. You you don't have one lure you fish with and you're going to catch all the fish with. You will have in your bag three or four different lures and then each lure with different colors for the day or so on. Just want to open the packet here to show you guys how these quick clips look like. You get different types of quick clips. This one is with a rolling swivel. This is so this is the one with a swivel and with a quick clip so this is just easier when changing when you see your lure isn't getting any chases or anything just change it up and maybe with that change you will start getting that chases if it's grunters, berries, cobs you don't always know what, what it is there for the day but yeah as we said we're talking grunters grunters Okay, so yeah, um, I must say that that does help. We use the same thing. Um, the other thing that is very nice about the quick clip. So if you tie your, um, I'm going to use this. Let's let's just use my finger as an example. If I make a line, if I take the line and I tie the knot straight on the the um, this the the little lure. If I tie it straight on, it can't move. So the line is stuck there. So, so you don't have that movement that the lure wants to give. But as soon as there's a little bit of space between with a clip, so there's a clip and there's space, that can happen with the lure. So that's why you get a Rapala knot where, where you actually make a little loop into your, um, your lure or your artificial bait. So the clip allows that movement that, that, that it's designed for to move. So that is why it's, it's very nice to use that. Otherwise, if you don't want to use a bait clip, if you do want to tie the knot, Make sure that you use a Rapala knot, or there's a couple of different knots that you can actually use, but you don't want it to, to tie straight onto it and, and make it tight there on the, on the lure, because then it, it can't move. So make sure that there's a, it's a, it's a little gap with it so that the movement can happen. Um, yes, okay. So let's talk about, let's talk, uh, start talking about the lures. Um, obviously, people don't understand this especially women not understand this fully but lures and fishing rods is exactly like shoes you need them for different occasions for different dresses for different weather uh, so the lures are like that so even if you've got the same lure normally you'll have that in a couple of colors okay so like I said I don't have a lot of experience about granted fishing and estuary fishing with lures but I do have a lot of experience fishing for bonnies and and it's the exact same principle of apply so you'll try the lures in different colors different depths um, for that specific day if you've got clean water then you're going to try more neutral colors more blues and whites and browns if you're going to target uh, if it's if it's very dirty water you're going to target and it's overcasted then you're going to talk try more uh, bright colors your greens your pink your oranges stuff like that is that my correct in saying that john yeah that's how we got it as well so. okay so the first one we're going to talk about, what do we call these? Bucktails. So bucktails, they get their name from their tail, obviously. It's made with uh, buck hair, but you get different ones made with, uh, what do you call that type of hair? It's not horse hair. More <laughs> fake hair, I don't think they're huge for horse hair. <laughs> so yeah, it's, 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 it's the hair of the of, of a buck. And then you get them in different colors. This is a normal type of weighted lure with the at the back it's, it's not going to give you action if you don't give it an action so meaning if you're going to cast it and you're just going to pull it in it's going to be like a sinker just bringing it in so this thing you mainly want to put in an action so when casting this you usually just flick the rod up and bring the slack in flick the rod up and bring the slack in so this bucktail will move like this and then you will do different movements for different type of fish so you can just bring this in or in the middle of the water but more to the top and more to the bottom there you can play around with the speeds you want for where you want this one running so, so, so do you wait for it to drop on the bottom before you flick it up again yes okay so you can give it a, it's, it's not gonna take hours to drop it's gonna be a quick yep. fish 
What I like to do with lures when, when, when I get them and I want to see how quickly they drop or what they do when you drop them or how, how they move when you, when you pull the line is here in front of my feet where the water is, is a bit deeper and I can see where it's moving. I like to pull it through or just throw it and let it drop. So I pull and I drop and I can see it, it drops quite quickly. So I will play around with the speeds in front of me where I can see them and then move on to start casting them. Okay, so, and, and these bucktails obviously also come in different weight sizes. Different weights, different colors. Uh, this is the color range of BLU. So you get the, yeah, we've got four colors. We've got the biggest sizes just to show you guys. So we've got chartreuse green. This is nice for um, clear waters. Usually we start with a clear color because it's beautiful. That's, that's the only reason why. That's all that this is all about. Is the more beautiful it is, uh, the more choice we'll have on it. White is your most favorite color when choosing a bucktail when you're not sure where to start because you will see on the shelves there's a load of colors and then you get the pink. This is your next favorite. Mm -hmm. And then you get your more natural color type of blue and then the chartreuse green that's not that glowy. Yeah. I, I will say that normally when I get to any type of artificial uh, fishing, I tend to go for the pink one first and then my second favorite one is uh, anything white with a red head. I don't know why, but that normally for tuna fishing and for uh, bonnie fishing, those are normally the, the top two lures for, for... I think that's the principle we take everywhere. Okay, so it's, a, it's the same. It's a always same. a bright color, always a natural color. Then okay. you know you set So up. So if you're starting out and you want to go, uh, when you try the first time you'd want to try this, get a pink one and try a white one with a red uh, head. Um, you want prefer the best preferred size for somebody that's starting out uh, size for for bucktail for grunter. Let's go just grunter now. Not not uh, what weight would you would you when, say start? When we're looking at weights and the rods and reels you're going with, we can start anything from a three eight ounce. That's about a ten grams up to a half an ounce. That's about twelve. 14 grams okay so we play f between 10 and 10 and 20 grams we play 10 and 20 grams okay yeah. so if you want to start out with bucktails 10 to 20 grams go buy a pink one or a white one that's that's the uh, advice from from the experts um and that's not me okay so next one we're going to go to the head on top water lures okay so um you you might see a lot of guys especially in vitsant um they're starting to use this more and more and more and I know there's a guy in, in Sedgefield that also has great success with, with these. Um, yeah, so, so definitely getting more a trend nowadays is the artificial lures and I see there's a couple of guys going for grunter on fly fishing as well. We might be, get somebody in um, to talk about the fly fishing side of grunters fishing as well. But um, let's talk about the top water lures now. Top waters, well we've got the head-ons here, head-on Zara Spook. This is a Spook Junior. You will see them also. We've got them in different colors. Uh, yeah, so the ones you get here is like a bone color. It's like a more white natural type of color. And then you get mixed like a blue, yellowish, white, and then you get black. Okay, so you want uh, the, the bucktails. Will you work that on the banks or will you cast it into the deeper channel and work it off the channel onto the banks? Um, and, and these ones, where do you work the, the different type of baits for, for yeah, grunter? Yeah, I think it's mostly everywhere the same. Like these, we'll go on the bank. On the bank, more yeah. on the banks and, and work it because it's top water. It's, this, yeah. this doesn't sink, this floats. So it doesn't sink. So And, and the action on the top water, because that one, you're going to let drop and then pick up the slack and you're going to give it a, a nice flick and then pick up the slack. How do you work the? How do you work this one? Well, the top water is a bit of a practice because when playing with with top water, you want to keep on flicking your tip as you're retrieving it. So it's it's almost a little bit of a jigging action. Yeah. You flick it, flick it, flick it like a little injured fish. You want to imitate. Yeah. It goes stops, goes stops. Is but, that but you want to smooth because you will see when it's running on water, it's going to give you a zigzag. Ah, with walk. every flick, it gives you a. a, a yeah. Okay. Walk the, walk the dog is what they call it. Okay. So you so want it, it's smooth. Not as a, well. It's not a normal retrieve, just a straight retrieve. Yeah. It's just little flicks so that it goes zigzag. Yes. On the, okay, understand. But there's there's small 
tricks that you need to know when going with with, with for for grunters with these things. So there's people that would like to go uh, just flick it the whole time and then a sudden stop and then start flicking again with a sudden stop. But with that sudden stop, you wait a few seconds and then start. And it's usually when it stops and that sudden jerk again is when the grunter will take. And then your second one guys like to use is you cast it in, you let it just run into the stream, you leave it, and then about 30 seconds or so, you give it a twitch and you let it go in the stream again. So with that one, you'll have about a four minute retrieve okay. from the cast to back to your rod. Okay. Will be a four minute retrieve around that, yes. Okay, so, and then the new kid on the block. Everybody's talking about this and I'm gonna do an episode on on these boys, um, slow jigging. I'm gonna do a full episode. We're gonna go, um, what do you call it? Uh, stock first, hike. We're gonna go 50, 60 meters with slow, slow jigging. There is a couple of guys going, having great success with slow jigging in deep sea. But today we're gonna to be talking about slow jigging for grunters. Mysteries. So, sorry, but these I haven't found any luck on grunters <laughs> so far, I'm not gonna lie. But I know there's a lot of people that found success on these. And with these, this is a very, I won't say new, there's a lot of guys that have used these before, long before anybody else. And the thing with the slow jigs is, uh, it's a normal piece of isometric metal. So meaning it's got a ridge on the one side and it will mainly be flat on the other side, giving it a flutter or a kick movement. Okay, so yeah, uh, all you can see, let's move it to this camera. You'll see it's got white stripes on that with a bump. And then if you turn around, it's flat. And there's a reason for that, they want it like that. Okay, so so the same thing if you're vertically jigging with um, on deep sea, you're gonna pull it up and it's gonna flutter down. So there's exactly the same thing's gonna happen. A lot of the same action as with the bucktails. Thus, yes, okay. but also very the same action as a top water. That's why I say uh, slow jigs is so versatile that you're not going to sit with the mindset of a bucktail, but you're going to try different things every okay, time. Okay, I understand what you're saying. So you can walk the dog with that, or you yes. can give but it a, a nice flick, let it flutter down, flick, yes. let it flutter down. Uh, okay, I understand. So this isn't going to go on the top of the water because it is weighted. But what I have found with these is if you lose, because sometimes this is a concentr concentrating game to play, so when losing concentration with this thing and you're busy retrieving with a flick and you lose that bit of speed, it's going to fall. But when it falls, it's going to look like an injured fish at the same time. So it flutters down. It flutters down. So no matter what you actually do to this, this is going to give you action like no other lure okay. will be able to give you. Um, which side do you tie it on? Um, so you're going to tie it on the top side. Okay. As as I have done it, yeah. I've done it on. That's why I wanted to ask that because um, if you look at a, a lure like this, you would suspect to tie it at the top, but you actually don't. That is, if you want to add an additional hook, you can add additional hooks. You tie it in the same, same sp uh, spring where the hooks is currently at. So you tie it um, at the nose with the, where the little eye is, um, or you can clip your, your clip in there. But don't tie it at the bottom, that's just if you want to use an extra hook. That is why there's an extra ring down there. And when attaching these, please be careful for the hooks because they yeah. are super sharp. So there it goes. Okay, so and your line's gonna be attached there. And as you can see, um, that was what I was talking about. Now there you can move, that, that lure can move. If you tie the line straight onto that, the lure can't move because the line's keeping it tight and the line's line, line can't move that nicely. But if you've got the weight clip in there, you've got free movement for, for the for that little um, artificial lure to, to make what it to do what it's designed for. I think yes. that covers everything for this episode. Um, thank you, Juan, for, yes. for sharing your knowledge. Um, sure. Always the guys from the tackle shops, they always know the best because they, they get everybody's stories from everything that works to everything that doesn't work. So, so you can always go and ask local knowledge. They will know a lot about fishing from everybody who tells them fishing stories and the true stories as well. Um, but yeah, remember to like the video, subscribe. Um, probably going to do the next video we're going to do is bait collection for grunters. So we've got it covered all your rods and reels now. 
and we've covered artificial lures and we've covered uh, everything that you need for your bait so um, hope to see you soon on the water cheers guys